Hey, what is going on guys? It is Lo-Fi and today I'm once again giving you another affinity photo tutorial. Now this is going to be aimed at more of the uh, the starter, the beginners and people like that. Because we are going to be looking at how you can make some YouTube assets or some digital assets for your YouTube channel. So to, because today we're going to be looking at how to make some digital assets for your YouTube videos, your Twitch streams, YouTube streams, anything really. And because these don't take that much time, I'm going to throw a few different kinds of assets for you guys to use. And I will include all of the files in the description so you can go there and you can download them and you can practice with the same files that I'm using in this video. So not much more to it. So let's just hop into Affinity Photo and get started. And here we are in Affinity Photo. So we're going to begin by doing a simple well, arrow. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Um, one that is faster and easier. One is more customizable. So whenever I'm making new assets, I'm going to go to new document and I'm creating 3000 by 3000 canvases because a square canvas just makes it so much easier to center everything whenever you need to then import that stuff. So just it's easier to get it into a square canvas and then just use it from there. Okay. <clears throat> the first way, the easier and the faster way is by going to some um, website like Pixabay, which gives you free copyright, free copyright free images. Because copyright and digital assets is complicated. So it's just it's just easier for you. And it's just nice to keep your it's just nicer to have your bases covered. Just in case, if you want to go for non copyright free images, because you think that it constitutes fair use, be my guest. I, I'm just safe saying that I do not know enough about copyright law to just not use copyright free images. It's just easier. I don't have to think about anything. That's it. So I'm going to go over here in Pixabay, not sponsored and search for an arrow. Now, the first thing you get on the site usually is something sponsored by stock sites. And uh, that's not what we're looking for, because that's that stuff will cost you. So just scoot on past that and then find an arrow that you like. For example, this one, and this is actually made into a PNG for you, so and here you can see free for com commercial use, no attribution required. We can just go ahead. You can even get the vector graphic for a lot of this stuff. So that's always nice. You might have to uh, just log in to get the full resolution files, but logging in doesn't really cost you anything. It doesn't just do it. And there we go. Now we can just simply download it, save it wherever you need to. You can open up your downloads. And now an affinity photo, just drag and drop. Personally, I would still, uh, even if you get it as a PNG, which is always nice to see, I would still uh, throw it in affinity photos because then you can control the resolution and you're ready to make any sort of adjustments to it that you want. For example, you can go to adjustments and recolor and just change the color of the arrow very simply. Or you can go to effects and just make it like a 3D image. So you can have, you just have more control over it. Outline. Give it a nice shadow, maybe. You get the point, okay? So that is the easiest way to do it. 
if you can if you're able to find one that suits your needs but if you're not able to find what you need um making an arrow is a great example because it's so easy to uh to do i'm just gonna hide those two and i'm just gonna group them Control g so affinity photo has just predetermined shapes that you can make so arrow is one of them but as you can see our arrow is straight and it's looking a little weird it's a double-ended arrow so instead we can just go over here you have your settings for the arrow right here first thing you want to do if you're making an arrow if we're trying to make an arrow like that last one was so a little curved which is pointing one way we can just adjust the uh, ends over here we're just gonna go for none and once you've done that if you want to if you really want to just adjust it the way you want it if you want to make it curved it's a lot easier to just straight up click convert to curves because now when it's a curve you can just go over here on the left side underneath the pen tool you have the node tool with the node tool since it's now curves you can just simply start dragging and make it the exact way that you want. And there we go. Now it's a nice curved arrow. You can of course make it freaking loop de looped or something the the world is your oyster and the easiest way to uh, recolor it is simply go to effects then go to color overlay and now you can make it whatever color you want let's make it a dark green for example you can adjust the op opacity make it 3d simple now if you want to make it a hollow um, if you want to make anything basically hollow, the easiest way is to just simply make an outline. Then you increase it so you have the thickness that you want. Don't have 3D on. And then just Control J to duplicate it. So if anything goes wrong, you can always come back to it. Rasterize it. So and don't preserve layer effects. So now the black outline is part of the image. Now just go to quick selection tool, for example, so the selection brush tool, or actually even easier, go to flood select tool. Click on the arrow and just delete. And there we go. Now you have a hollow arrow. And again, if you want to, color overlay, and you can change the color to whatever you want. There we go, now, now we have a nice pink one. And now, if you're going for something like that classical neon look, then simply just, now if you throw it 3D, you can see that we're getting something resembling a little bit of a tube shape which is which is just as you can see you can make make the arrow the exact way that you want it instead as with the uh with the first arrow that we got we're kind of stuck with the design of the original arrow now there is a better way to do it <laughs> Now, now, am I saying that this is the best way to make a digital asset for your content? No. D designer or just anything that uses vector graphics would be better because it's infinitely scalable. But if you only have Affinity Photo, then with this kind of a method, you're definitely not... You can definitely do a lot more. 
than just downloading images from the internet. You can make them exactly the way that you want. That's why I make them in uh, 3000 by 3000, because if I was to put this arrow into a 4K video, it would still be completely fine. You would see no resolution lost. Now that we got the arrow and we got the logo, which are probably the one of the two of the most common ones that I use personally, we're going to want to take a a third one which in this case would be something like a check mark once again this would be incredibly easy to do in affinity photo itself with the curves but if you don't want to bother it and if you're fine with that that uh, that you have less agency over it you can just simply download one of these once again pixabay free to use drag it in here now we have both a cross and a check mark how you get the get them separated is easy just go to the layer go to the selection tool which is under your freehand it might be rectangular already and just make a selection just you just want to check that it doesn't cut either one it doesn't have to be perfect should be fine yeah there we go Control c Control v and and remember that this is an image file still so you if you press delete now affinity photo is just going to remove the whole layer so you want to rasterize it delete and go back here rasterize invert selection and delete there we go. Might not have noticed anything before, but now they're completely separate. And we have the white here. So this is the perfect opportunity to show that we can just go to the flood select tool, click on the white, order width to zero, delete, same here, order width, zero, apply, delete. There we go. We have one check mark that is completely separate from the cross. Same thing you can do with that one. I'm just gonna hide it for now. Make it bigger. And now you can just simply use color overlay, for example, and you have your color that you want. Let's make it red. There we go. Now, whenever you're saving these, this is very important. Once you go to file and export, you want to make sure that you're not on a JPEG. If you make it a JPEG, it'll still the the file itself will fill out the blanks as white. So you're just back where you started. So you want to go to PNG, set the settings that you want, export, give it a name, check mark, for example, and save. Now, when you open it, you see that there is no white background and you're free to use it in your videos for as long as you want. And I always recommend that when you save the the asset as the way that you want it, you should also save. So go to save as and save this as the check mark project, for example, or just if you're making a lot of these from the same project, you can just fill it out and then have a have one project file which is like digital assets project so you can always come back to it and you can just change the colors make more adjustments whatever you want now for this project i wanted a 3d one so we can just go give it a bit of a 3d 
feel, maybe change the color to, I don't know, yellow. Like that. And we're good. Possibly give it a... Oh, shit. Possibly give it a bit of a outer shadow for this one. It was against a, a white background, so it needed a bit more visibility enhancement. That's looking pretty fine. If you're making an asset, uh, you possibly want to be looking more at the navigator on your right side than the actual project file because the project file the the big image that you have right there is most likely not the size that you, which you're going to what you are going to be seeing the asset in this is a better representation of what it's going to look like so let's say that i'm making a shadow for the asset if i'm looking at this i'm i'm very tempted to make it so that it looks good over here but keep in mind when everything gets, gets squished down, when you have it as a smaller image, all of the shadows and all of that is gonna get squished down as well. That means what looks good big, you probably won't be able to even see when it's small. And now we can just go export, <clears throat> check, mark, yellow, shadow. Call it whatever you want. But that is it. That is the very simple way of making and getting digital assets for your YouTube content or your Twitch streams or whatever. Just something, something quick I wanted to throw out there. So you guys can, if you're completely new to Affinity Photo, this hopefully helps you out at least a little bit. So that is it for me this time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful or possibly even entertaining. If you did, remember to leave a like on the video and consider a subscription if this, if you would think that I deserve it. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.